Hello, everyone, and welcome to the January 2022 Legacies and Lunch, a program of the Central Arkansas Library System's Butler Center for Arkansas Studies. I'm Heather Registers Benden, the Outreach Coordinator for the Bobby L. Roberts Library of Arkansas History and Art. The Roberts Library houses the galleries and bookstore at Library Square, the Butler Center for Arkansas Studies, and the Encyclopedia of Arkansas. The Roberts Library Research Room is open Tuesday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. And we will be open Saturday, January 8th and Saturday, January 22nd from noon to four for our bonus Saturdays. Please go to robertslibrary.org for all the specifics before planning your visit. So normally these programs are live streamed to YouTube, but we've had a glitch this month and um, that won't be happening, but it will be available by this evening on YouTube. So if you wanna tell your friends where to watch it, um, just tell them to check YouTube, maybe give me till tomorrow. So the speakers will answer questions at the end of the program. So you'll just need to type your questions in the chat box um, in Zoom. So for today's program. This month, we have Shabine Schmidt and Don House to talk about their new book, Remote Access, Small Public Libraries in Arkansas. The book is available from U of A Press and your local bookseller. Sabine holds an MA in American Studies from the University of Hamburg in Germany and an MFA in Literary Translation from the University of Arkansas. Her work has appeared in many publications, including National Geographic and the German edition of Rolling Stone. Don House has been photographing the people and landscapes of Arkansas for nearly four decades. His images have appeared in numerous exhibitions and publications such as Woman's World and the Wall Street Journal. He is the author of Buffalo Creek Chronicles, Not a Good Sign, and the children's book, Otto's Great Adventure. Please give a warm virtual welcome to Sabine and Dawn. And now if y'all will unmute yourselves okay. and you are ready to take it away. All right. All right. Welcome. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Heather. And thank you for, for joining us um, for a presentation um, on our book that uh, is now available, um, is available from Wordsworth Books in Little Rock and many other places. Um, we'll talk about how this book came about, uh, how we decided on the format, where we went, and we'll tell you some stories about the places and people we encountered on this four-year journey um, that it took to complete the book. Um, we uh started in a place called St. Paul. Oh, great. I have to use that. Okay. Okay. Uh, a place called St. Paul, which is a tiny uh, town of 112 people in Northwest Arkansas in the Ozarks. And we live halfway between Fayetteville and St. Paul. Um, this is Highway 16 that you see running there in front of the library. Um, with an a important concrete barrier that prevents the library from being destroyed or damaged by eager drivers who are um, visiting the Ozarks. We go to the St. Paul Library uh, more often than to the Fable Library, even though it's equidistant from where we live. And the main reason for that is the sense of community that um, the directors and uh, staff and volunteers of this library have created over the years. We just felt very much at home there the minute we stepped in inside and uh, started talking to people um, in the library. Here's some of the programming that they offered. This is pre-COVID, but you can see the variety of, of programs and the variety of interests that are being addressed um, even in this very, very small place. Um, and uh, some pictures from St. Paul itself, uh, very, very uh, typical Ozark small town um, with a great sense of community that also extends beyond the library. Here are the people who, who made the magic happen. They are both retired now, um, the previous directors of the library. Bonnie Rogers and Covington Rogers. And you can already see from the photos how we work. 
um, as a as a team as collaborators on this. Um, I take the color photos of the community of the library and, and what's around it. And Don uh, takes the, the black and white portraits of the patrons and uh, staff and volunteers. So Don photographs pretty much every or ended up photographing pretty much everyone who walked into the library on the day that we were scheduled to photograph there. So it could be, it could be 50 people, it could be five people, just depends on, on the day. It was watching uh, Bonnie and Covington work that, that, that uh, reiterated to us the importance of uh, libraries, especially in small communities and, and seeing the myriad of tasks that they did made us want to honor those those librarians and the services that they offer. This is the mayor, uh, Nina Seltz of St. Paul. So, for just for privacy's sake, uh, we're not naming uh, every person that we're showing you a photograph of because but we are naming the librarians who have more of a public role. But I could tell you a story about every single one of these people. So the more time we spent uh, at St. Paul, the more interested we became in how a library works, what its role is in a community, um, what kinds of services it provides. And um, that was the, the seed, the kernel, um, that then became the book. And this man, um, Bob Cochran, we will mention him by name, uh, runs the Center for Arkansas and Regional Studies at the University of Arkansas. We had a conversation with him, just telling him about this, this book idea about small public libraries all over Arkansas. Um, and uh, he, he got really interested and gave us a lot of feedback and uh, became extremely important uh, for this book. He also wrote the introduction for the book. He's a big reason why this book exists. Well, once uh, we, we had encouragement from Bob Cochran and, and wanted to pursue the project, we actually uh, began uh, here in Greenland, which is in Northwest Arkansas, uh, very close to home so we could uh, practice and see logistically how this might work. The door in the middle, that's the, the Greenland Public Library, open just a few afternoons a week, like so many of the small libraries that we, that we visited, they have limited hours and, and uh, create a lot of programming during those few hours. Police department on one side, uh, city offices on the other. And again, I walked around Greenland just uh, taking photos of the community. This is a, a footbridge that was installed so that the kids from the uh, neighborhood on the other side could walk to the library and to school. And uh, you will see quite a few photos of churches. I am, I, I just love uh, the architecture and the spirit of country churches. So I tend to photograph them a lot and more impressions of Greenland. This is the uh, Terry Underhill, the Greenland librarian. This is a police chief who's also uh, a big booster for the library and is on the library board. And a student uh, who uh, relies on the library, a, a university student who lives in Greenland and relies on the library. And uh, as we photographed uh, these people, our original idea was to do just this, to photograph the staff of the library and uh, a couple patrons perhaps who rely on it, maybe at their work or at home or at the library. But after we did this uh, practice session, uh, we decided that that uh, that was not going to be enough. We needed to say a lot more after we talked to these people, they affected us and we realized the story was much bigger. So we wanted to speak to uh, write more about the experiences at each library, 
And we also wanted to photograph more people. So we switched back to kind of a, a standard uh, procedure for us, which would be to, to photograph everyone who walks in the library on a given day. And so this became the standard setup um, for the remainder of the project. Uh, Don would bring in his book, uh, his book drop, no, his backdrop, um, and his lights and his camera and the chair that he uses for portraits in his own studio. Um, and we would set up wherever the library had space. Uh, in a few cases, as you will see, uh, that had to happen outside. Um, so some libraries had extra rooms that we could use. And for me, um, I continued my exploration of the town, um, the library, and even the landscape surrounding the library. And in the next slide, you can see me uh, setting up a shot, a landscape shot. I, was, I fell in love with um, the area around Bayou de Vue and uh, the Cache River, um, an area, area that I didn't know very well at all, and st started taking landscape photos. So here I'm using my um, a Mia camera and the light meter, uh, trying to capture the the evening light, and the remain the the result of this uh, this setup is this photo, which remains one of my favorites in the book of Bayou de Vue. Uh, so once we had a plan uh, how we would work and where we would go, we commissioned our good friend, the artist Greg Mitchell, who's a trained cartographer to create this map for us. It shows the regions of Arkansas and it shows each of the places that we visited. You can see there's a bit of a cluster in Northwest Arkansas because that's where we live and that's where we started. Um, but we tried to um, find a library in, in each region, at least one library in each region of the state um, to show the different um, cultures and what unites them uh, all over the state. This is the, uh, the town of Kingston, and uh, again in Northwest Arkansas. And uh, we decided to, um, uh, with our new way of approaching the libraries, um, we started with Kingston and uh, that, that set the tone for the rest of the book. Each set of photographs of the libraries and the people are bookended by uh, personal essays by uh, Sabine and I, uh, and our essays we discovered tended to uh, parallel our photography of Sabina concentrating uh, even in her writing on the community on history and the culture. And, and uh, I usually concentrating on uh, a person that I've met there uh, that I ended up talking to that affected me in some way. That's uh, the old Odd Fellows Hall in Kingston, um, an interior. Um, I'd still find this very funny that 1943 makes it very old. Um, that's, that's the year my mother was born. That's not very old. Um, the original uh, entrance to the library, now uh, part of the backyard, and uh, the Kingston Square with Cat. And um, this, uh, this image, uh, exists because it turns out that the, the Kingston librarian, Linda Davidson's daughter was a professional clown and uh, decided to entertain people who were waiting to be photographed um, that day. And this gives you a good sense of, of how we approach uh, the portraiture, a very a simple backdrop that we've used for decades, a uh, very simple lighting setup and uh, no instruction whatsoever. We would never tell anyone to smile, never, never try to uh, uh, tell them how to stand or sit or, or organize them by height or any, any such nonsense, which really is the anathema of good portraiture, I think. And uh, we make them comfortable and let them do what they want. And we only take two or three images uh, of each group. But I think when you have no preconceived notions and you send people out on the canvas and you, you uh, turn around and walk away from them, then the relationship between people uh, comes out clearly. The camera doesn't lie. Again, these are people who just walked in. 
the librarians, of course, at all of these places, the 21 libraries knew we were coming. We had to arrange that with them, but the patrons did not. So they just happened to walk in wanting to do their normal library business and got uh, accosted by two strange photographers. But uh, to a person, they all agreed to be photographed and sign model releases and other off-putting things. Uh, if they thought that it would help their librarians and the library, they value, they love their librarians and value the library. You may recognize this person as Abby Burnett, historian who's uh, written extensively about um, funereal practices in the Ozarks and cemeteries and who happens to live in Kingston. Someone we write extensively about. Okay, this is, uh... Uh, from a town called Hamburg in uh, southeastern Arkansas. Uh, you can see how I tend to photograph buildings, how I tend to photograph in communities. Um, I'm very interested in geometrical composition, formal composition, and um, how colors interact with each other. And I, I was drawn to this building in particular, as, as you can tell, because of the the green and the pink and the red and the blue and this, these beautiful strong lines. And you can see that uh, we do not uh, photograph uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, images. We're, we're trying to portray the character and personality feeling of a, of a community. Another church in Hamburg just down the street from the library, now the Hamburg Garden Club's headquarters. This is in Cotton Plant, um, a branch library of the um, Woodruff County system. Uh, you can tell from the, just from the furniture and the way it's set up that uh, much of this library's uh, audience, many of its patrons are children and uh, they are bused to Augusta about 30 miles away, uh, make that trip to Augusta in the morning, come back in the afternoon, the school bus drops them off uh, right up outside the library and they come in for tutoring and snacks um, and just a, a chance to decompress and spend time um, with some um, very dedicated adults. Uh, downtown Cotton Plant, uh, a town that does not have much, much left yet, but uh, people are trying. Once known as the City of the Arts and the water tower and uh, an old business. Again, as you can see, I'm, I'm drawn to the, to the strong lines. This is, uh, un, uh, uh, this is the mayor of, of uh, Cotton Plant. And I've just, the name has just escaped me totally. I'm so sorry. Uh, we ended up photographing uh, eight mayors just by chance uh, in this process. And uh, six of them were women and four of those women of color. It was a fascinating group. I'll come back with her name in a moment. Uh, these children would come in after school and it was one of the most uh, important, uh, I think most powerful shoots of, of the whole project were these young people who came in after being bussed to uh, Brinkley and Augusta and bussed back, they would come into the library to do their homework under the supervision of a volunteer, uh, a former teacher now turned uh, tutor. And what a wonderful energy coming from these young people. Again, we're not naming them uh, for privacy reasons. This is uh, back in the Ozarks, uh, di different, this library is a little different, um, serves a slightly larger community than most of the other communities that we visited. And it is a Carnegie Library, one of two uh, Carnegie Libraries in the state of Arkansas that are still open as libraries. Um, it's, it gets a lot of visitors who are uh, tourists in addition to the patrons who live there and just a beautiful building and a beautiful setting. I'm going to interrupt here just to say that Clara Harston is the uh, mayor of Cotton Plant, the name that I that slipped me. 
I revisited Eureka Springs for some exterior shots. And as you can see, this happened during COVID. So uh, as soon as the pandemic hit, our, uh, our routine had to change. A lot of the, the type of work that we did before, we had to adjust and modify like pretty much everybody else. So uh, I was able to go inside the library and you can see librarians sanitizing media being masked. Um, the library was closed to the public at that point. This is the uh, Eureka Springs librarian, uh, April Griffith and her son. A member of the Navajo Nation who was just traveling through a town at the time and using the Eureka Springs library to keep in contact with his uh, family out west. Another great example of just telling people to go out on the canvas and do whatever they want and turn around and leave. Uh, Twin Groves, this is the historic building designed and uh, built by Silas Owens, um, a local architect and builder who um, sort of invented this architectural style of rock work and uh, it now houses the Twin Groves Library. It's a wonderful family from Twin Groves. This is the assistant fire chief who we write extensively about. Many in our essays, many of these people are highlighted. Hampton, the Calhoun County Library on the square in Hampton, the uh, brick building in the back, back left is uh, what, what's now the library. Um, they've been able to expand and I think we have some ex interior shots of the library, a beautiful, cozy space that is well loved and well used, as you can see. Grandmother and grandson, grandmother more enthused about being photographed than the grandson. Uncle and his niece. And uh, we went to Smackover, which is south of Hampton. And uh, I found this beautiful church that I needed to include in the book. And I also really like this book exchange, a take on the Little Free Library movement, uh, apparently an Eagle Scout project. And uh, uh, I took a book and left a book, as you're supposed to do. Very elegant uh, siblings who were the first people photographed in Smackover. The librarian Melba Bussell was such an effective barker for us that anybody who walked in the library was, was uh, forced to, to go upstairs where we were set up, including the mail carrier. McCrory, um, again in, in uh, Southeast, I'm sorry, South, I'm sorry, East Central Arkansas in the agricultural area around Bayou de Vue and Cache River. And the very, to me, very representative uh, image of, of the towns in that region. We uh, often visit cemeteries for their stories and, and their history. And this was a, uh, a tombstone that moved me. Uh, I will name this person as Paula Burnett, uh, was the editor of the uh, county paper in uh, Woodruff County. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, we had a wonderful conversation with her. She grew up in cotton plant and was willing to uh, talk very openly and honestly about uh, growing up in a very segregated society and how it's still affecting uh, the region. And she also uh, uh, publishes the Historical uh, Society Bulletin and has been trying to concentrate on, on uh, getting the stories of Black residents of Woodruff County that have been ignored for a long time. Mark Tree, um, another, another building that drew me because of its lines, textures, and colors. It used to be a drugstore called Arkansas with a W. You can, you can still see that um, in the background there. Mother and daughter. This is stamps. We uh, really wanted to include stamps uh, for a number of reasons. One being that uh, Dr. Maya Angel uh, lived there, spent part of her childhood there. Um, and this was the school she attended. 
uh, of Rosenwald School funded in part by the Julius Rosenwald Fund, um, which was established to help black communities um, provide good education. Um, this is one of, I think, 400 um, that used to exist in Arkansas. And you can see Lafayette Training School uh, in parentheses, it says COL colored. There was a, um, a high school in stamps for white students and uh, with uh, Rosenwald funds, it was possible to build one where Maya Angelou got part of her education. This is another mayor, the mayor of Stamps, Brenda Davis, uh, wonderful energy. And of course, uh, in talking to um, all of our mayors, we, it became, you know, it's, it, I mean, it would be obvious, but uh, I guess maybe uh, reiterated that women, of course, uh, have to deal with all the, the issues of small town uh, bureaucracy and administration with the addition of uh, sexism thrown in. And of course, for women of color with sexism and racism. This is Tolette. Um, I always mispronounce the name of the town. I'm so sorry. Uh, this is the library in Tolette, also housed in a uh, former Rosenwald um, building. You can still see the, the beautiful beadboard. And uh, it's a small and cozy space as so many libraries are. This is a former mayor of Tallette, uh, Catherine Thomas and her son, Alan. And this is the current mayor, Brenda Porter, her husband, Artie. We went uh, into the Washita's. Uh, this is Norman, the square in Norman. And we were greeted by that sign and uh, it faces the small library. This is the cover of our book, and you can see on the uh, on the left over there the chair that Don uses for his portraits. This library really was too small uh, to set up for portraits, so he took them outside. As you can also see in the background, it was Christmas time and uh, quite chilly, but the but the patrons were were willing. This is the mayor of of uh, Norman Rosanna. Uh, Markham. And Rosanna is, again, a wonderful uh, energy. Uh, and she was killed by a, a, a drunk driver uh, shortly after this photograph was taken. We've lost that we know at least three people um, that are no longer with us who were photographed in this project. Don't you want to know this man's story? <laughs> uh, some of you may recognize this library. It's um, now the uh, Brooks Microlibrary in Wrightsville, uh, just south of Little Rock, and one of our favorite places. Um, for, for again, it's cozy. It's it's bright. It's welcoming, um, and. Uh, a lot of it had to do with um, the librarian who ran the Wrightsville branch at the time, uh, Jamel Jackson there on the left. That's his mother on the right who was very reluctant to be photographed and he, uh, she was, she was uh, looking pretty grim until he leaned over and gave her a kiss. And being a highly trained professional, I knew when to uh, trip the shutter. Uh, we're in Conway County uh, now, uh, runs a bookmobile, and we decided uh, to follow the bookmobile around on one day of its route. Uh, it goes to 12 different uh, locations uh, throughout the week. Uh, this is the uh, librarian and bookmobile pilot, Michael Cree, who we write extensively about. And uh, this is Mayor Gary Green of uh, Menifee. And you can see for this project, the, uh, the only other one that wasn't shot uh, like in library, uh, we decided to use the uh, bookmobile as, as the backdrop and available light. A little trickier, but uh, a little easier to work with uh, when you're going from location to location. This is the mayor of uh, Plummerville, which is, uh, who is, uh, uh, Ed Palladino, and uh, on the left is uh, City Clerk. 
closer to our home. This is a famous uh, venue in West Fork, uh, closed because of COVID, but I just, again, love the architecture. Great example of uh, a, a man who just came in to get some DVDs and uh, was forced to sit down and, and be photographed. But again, uh, very willing. Uh, we, we ended up photographing over 500 people in this project. And uh, there literally was one person who uh, we could never convince to, to sit down. Not a bad record. This woman keeps the log of every uh, book that she checks out of the West Fork Library and she's showing that off to us. This is in Parkin, um, the old high school in Parkin, which is now used for city offices and county offices. The library has a branch there. Um, and uh, it looks very much like a, like a high school still. This is the children's section. This is the librarian, uh, uh, Beth Chisholm. And you can see she's wearing a, a leather coat and there's layers uh, visible underneath. It's because the, it was in the middle of winter and the library has no working heat. So as the afternoon wore on, we had to put on layer and after layer. It's a grandmother and her granddaughter. The granddaughter has just won the Poetry Out Loud uh, uh, regionals and is heading off to state. And uh, Horatio at the end of a long day um, of photographing a uh, photographer's shadow. This woman is laughing out loud because she asked to, to uh, somebody to hand her a book to be photographed with. And, and she's just realizing that the book is Santa's underwear. This is the tiny town of Lynn um, with a driftwood library and its book return. This is wonderful, a uh, library loving family in Lynn. And when they walk in, the, uh, the circulation numbers dramatically increase. Someone we write very extensively about. Charleston, I love the, the yard sign, the library champion lives here. Of course, that is true for many houses all over Arkansas because libraries do get a lot of public, well, individual public support. Uh, the interior of the Charleston Library used to be a National Guard um, armory. Uh, so it's a little bigger, again, a little bigger than, than most of the other libraries. And uh, we were there during National Quilt Month and uh, saw this beautiful exhibition of uh, quilts made by members of the community. Another person that we write extensively about from Charleston. You'll have to get the book if you want to know the stories <laughs> of these people. <laughs> uh, this In the book, this is the last image. Um, student work that's uh, attached to the Charleston Middle School, which is next to the library. And it shows the regions of Arkansas. Some people say there are six uh, geological, topographical, cultural regions, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I just love the, the way um, this, this map was created. And um, what we heard not infrequently on our, on our visits was that uh, Arkansas really only has two regions. Um, and uh, they are Northwest Arkansas and Pulaski County and the rest of the state. And uh, Northwest Arkansas and Pulaski County would do well to wake up and, and uh, see what's happening in the rest of the state because there are such great differences. So um, as I mentioned, we photographed almost 500 people and 39 of them were, were working librarians. And um, if you'll indulge us, we'd like to just quickly go through and show you the, uh, the faces of the other ones. Uh, this is Jay Carter from uh, the Moralton Library, the, which is also the, uh, the source of the uh, bookmobile. Uh, this is Lisa Boer from uh, Charleston. Trisha King on the right, uh, and uh, Misty Hawkins, the director at the time. You may recognize some of your coworkers or friends. This is Nikita Thomas from uh, Cotton Plant. 
This is Glendo Drain, a system administrator in Washington County, standing in the Greenland Library. These three librarians, Holly Gillum, uh, Kendall Brumley, and Melissa Chapman from Hamburg. Jenny Harnigan from Hampton. On the left is Allie Stevens, the uh, director of the uh, Hampton Library. And this is the uh, board of directors who just happened to be meeting that afternoon. This is Trudy Smith from uh, Twin Grove. Twin Groves, and Patricia Kemp, uh, her assistant. This is Linda Davidson, the librarian in Kingston, hamming it up for the, for the camera. I promised her this photo would not appear. There's a lesson there. <laughs> this is Betty Kennedy from West Fork. Melba Boussel from Smackover. This is uh, uh, Amy from, uh, whose last name I just lost. From Norflet. Uh, from Norflet. Forgive me, Amy. I just lost. Uh, Felicia Jones from Smackover. Michael O'Connell, a system uh, administrator, librarian in El Dorado. This is Amy Everts, her husband from uh, Horatio. This is Joanne Moore, the former librarian uh, for many years in, in Horatio. And Rhonda Berenger, the librarian in De Queen. Kathy Bates, uh, director at Lynn. This is Karen Golden, a system librarian uh, and who is with Kim Way, the librarian in McCrory. This is Fran Bell from Mark Tree and her son. We mentioned that the, uh, uh, that the Norman Library has no paid staff. It's all run by, by volunteers. And uh, there's, here are a couple of them. This is Victoria and JD Librand and Mary Beth and David Lizabee. This is Ashley Burris from. Uh, well, technically uh, from Walnut Ridge. Walnut Ridge. Um, she's making a delivery uh, to the Lynn Library, which is one of her branches. This is Dorothy Roberts, the former librarian in Parkin. And this is uh, Rosie Bird. And Sudi Ward, Patsy Clark, all from Stamps. And then that tree in the left could not be moved. So that's why it stayed. And this is Julio Fuentes from Tolette, his wife, Barbara. And finally, uh, this is uh, the one of the better smiles, even though it was never uh, asked for in the in the entire project. Uh, this is librarian John Riley from West Fork. That's it. Okay. Just about, I guess. Um, there we go, Heather. And like magic, I reappear. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this was fabulous. certainly. We certainly would be open for questions if anyone has any. Well, I have a few and um, we usually have people that put questions in, um, you know, as we're kind of doing, as I'm kind of doing my questions, but, um, you know, we've known for a long time here at CALS that, you know, librarians are so important to the community. But um, I think you're right when you were talking about, you know, they're really only two areas, you know, Northwest Arkansas and Pulaski County, and the, there's the, there is the rest of the state. And these folks um, are really superheroes in their community. Um, you know, libraries are giving internet access and helping apply for jobs. And, um, you know, it's, we always like to say we're so much more than just books anymore. You know, they are a place where people um, can get some of the basic necessities that you need to live life. Um, so thank you for, 
doing this book, for documenting these libraries and these librarians. Um, I think it's it's so incredible that you did this work. Um, so how long did this project take? I mean, you you talked about, you know, in the middle, COVID happened. So so when did you start and how long did it take? Um, we we started in 2017. The, the idea um, was Don's idea. I think he first mentioned it to me in 2017. And um, we, you know, we talked to the director in San Paul at the time, we talked to Bob Cochran, kind of fleshed out the idea, started experimenting with the, with the Greenland approach where we actually um, try to photograph uh, people outside of the library and then refine that approach. So from 2017 until um, the summer of 2020, no, the fall of 2020, we were photographing, writing, um, editing our photos, putting putting the book together, and uh, then it took uh, almost a year, eight eight, mo eight months maybe, uh, to a year, uh, just the, the final editing layout design process. And, uh, and the University of Arkansas Press did an incredible job um, making this book. We are just so pleased with the design of it. Liz Lester, um, big shout out to, to the graphic designer um, who had the perfect vision to make this book shine. So many, many thanks to her and to the press. So yeah, to answer your question, uh, pretty much four years. <laughs> and I've just put the link to U of A Press. Oh, I had to hit enter. So I've just now I've just really put the link for the book. Um, it's called oh. Remote Access. Um, and so you can order it there. You can obviously get it um, at Wordsworth here in Little Rock or any um, bookseller. I'm guessing you could also order it online from a variety of places. Um, yeah, it's, I, U of A, I have to admit, I have to, I, I don't think Melissa's King's on here, but, but she has you guys on the front page of U of A Press. And we do a lot of book talks with them. And oftentimes I have to go to their site and then go and search. But because y'all are on the front page, all I have to do is click that little thing because I can't ever, you know, I can't ever gather everything from the website that I need to promote in one time. I mean, that would make my life so much easier. But I love that y'all are the first book on there. So it's made my life easier. <laughs> um. So I know that we've got some photography folks out there, and I know that they're going to want to know about the cameras you use and the process that you use. So talk a little bit about the photography and, you know, your, your process. Um, well, I'll start with the, the, with the black and white. Um, uh, it, I shoot film, uh, and I have uh, for quite a while, of course, and um, it, it's my uh, it, it's my medium of choice and the one whose tools uh, and idiosyncrasies that I know best. Um, uh, there could have been advantages to doing this, uh, photographing uh, all of these uh, digitally, of course. But um, so you can imagine with 500 uh, different people, the number of rolls of film that uh, it was involved here just for the people alone and the processing and printing. But uh, it, to me, it's well worth it. And the, the quality of the images uh, and the, the confidence that I have in the outcome uh, makes me continue to use it. I use two and a quarter uh, square medium format film uh, with uh, an ancient uh, Hasselblad uh, camera. I um, photograph both uh, with digital and film cameras, but for the book, 99% uh, of the photos are film, color film. I just I just love the, the, the richness of the color, um, the depth, the, the grain, the detail uh, that are possible when using color film. And um, as you saw in that one photo, I, I was using a twin lens reflex, reflex Mamiya um, camera, square format. All the, all the photos um, in the book are square format because of how we work, um, because of the, the cameras we used. And, um, the, the results just are you know much much fuller than than um, what I think digital can offer no matter how how fine and expensive your digital camera is um, having said that there are I think six photos in the book that are digital um, but we're not pointing those out 
And I love the, well, the other thing, I really love the, the slow process of um, using color film, having to set up the tripod, having, you know, all the, the steps that you have to go through. And I, I was doing a lot of that, you know, outside on a sidewalk or in a parking lot or in a field. And that led to some really interesting conversations because people would stop and ask me what I was up to. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a great way to, to meet um, people in the communities and, and, uh, and hear their stories. Yeah. Every yeah. camera, uh, every camera has a rhythm, I would say to it. Uh, and that rhythm can really affect uh, the way that you photograph, the slowness, the quickness, uh, the, the time that's spent setting the photograph up, uh, the work afterwards, it's all part of the process. And uh, for us, a film works best. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I, I don't think y'all are alone in that for sure. I think, um, I think, you know, photographers, they, they still love their film. Um, yeah. So Sabine, talk about being a library director. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my cover is Your more. other yes. job. Um, <laughs> my other job. So um, again, St. Paul is our favorite library and um, the director uh, retired um, two years ago and uh, it's a part-time job. That director uh, work, works 15 hours a week uh, with a lot of volunteers who make it possible for the library to be open 37 hours. I was just fascinated by uh, the work that this library does, how they do it, how they work with the community. Um, so when this uh, job became available, I applied. My, my experience um, is not in libraries so much other than, you know, the years and years and years that I've spent in libraries myself um, for, the, um, for my MFA degree, for um, my writing, for my research, but I never actually worked in the library. Uh, and it's it's been it's been an interesting right. I started six weeks before we had to close down for COVID. <laughs> I barely knew what I was doing. I probably still barely know what I'm doing. <laughs> but I have seen over those two years, I have seen in St. Paul, in my job, everything that we witnessed during the years traveling to the other libraries in Arkansas. And it's given me uh, an even deeper appreciation for library work and the work that librarians do and the importance of libraries in their communities. Um, I mean, the things that we offer from, you know, the little free pantry outside to uh, help with unemployment applications. I mean, you know, you know what libraries do and what librarians do. And we try to do that on a very small scale because it's a small library, but um, it, it, uh, it's deeply gratifying, uh, not easy, and I love it. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think people, library jobs are often some, you know, dream job for people. They'll say, oh, you know, I would love to work at the library and the library is a great place to work. But we do so much more than just check out books or shelf books. Um, we really are the heart of the community. So we have some questions from our audience. Um, do you plan for a second volume or an exhibit <laughs> of other photos taken during the project? <laughs> well, I'm certainly willing if we could fund it, if we yeah. could, if uh, another volume would be, uh, I would love to go back on the road to a lot of the the libraries and it was so i mean there are 235 odd libraries and many of them would have qualified as as small but we had to pick and choose and often it was based on uh you know where we could find a place to pitch a tent or or find a room and the libraries we could reach from that mm -hmm. and sometimes it was just whether as, as we're making phone calls the librarian happens to be taking a day off or something and uh, so i'd love to go back and fill in all those all those gaps yeah. and uh, photograph another 500 uh, library patrons. Mm -hmm. well, Definitely. The question, yeah. I, I'd go in a The question asker, I don't think that's a real word, but the person who asked the question knows Bob Cochran. So call Bob Cochran. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody, everybody call Bob Cochran. We'll put his name, we'll put his number up in a minute. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, but yeah, an, an exhibit would be great too. 
actually, we have been talking about that with Bob. Um, okay. So there, there is a chance. Again, much of it has to do with logis logistics and um, money, yes. but um, we're working on that. Yeah, a traveling exhibition. Uh, you know, when we first started the project, actually, uh, uh, before we uh, decided to go in the direction of a book, we were planning on an exhibition that would probably be traveling with uh, Arts on Tour through the Arkansas Arts Council. Perfect. So I'm, I'm hoping that that will that will will do that as well. Mm -hmm with everything else. It may just take yeah. us a little while. Yeah, I think we it would be really interesting and, and uh, fun for um, patrons and librarians in all over the state to see what their counterparts look like. Um, you know, just get that sense of, it, of community that's actually statewide. Yeah. So we would love to have a, uh, a traveling exhibition like that. That would be cool. This is the, uh, Heather, as you can imagine, uh, it was hard enough to, um, to have to narrow down photographs for the book. I mean, you know, out of, uh, you know, we had to, we couldn't put every single one of the 500 people in the book, which, and it's a gut-wrenching process, uh, as you can imagine, but um, to narrow it down for an exhibition where you might only have 20 images it it uh, is something you don't look forward to yeah, <laughs> you feel like you're be. insulting and dissing everybody that's not in the show yeah. yes yes and you know you don't want to put a whole lot of words on the walls either in exhibits um so right. so right. You, you do you yeah. have to it's a it's that's a, a challenging job so um we have another question do you feel that you tell something about the a community from its library? And if so, what might that be? Oh, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. That is question. an excellent question. Um, well, on a, okay, on a very um, uh, surface level, on a very obvious level, the first time we, we drive into a town and look for the library, you can tell uh, by the shape the building is in, um, you can tell by, uh, the, by the way it looks on the inside, uh, you know, what kinds of furniture do they have, um, what kinds of books and other um, offerings they have. You can tell how much official support the library gets. Mm -hmm. So we get a sense of their budget um, based on how well run down some of them are because they just don't get the funds and as you know there are many reasons there can be many reasons for that um but we've noticed well i've noticed um that the that the public the community support for a library may be different and may be stronger than the political and official support for the library so a lot of them are struggling and doing amazing work with the little that they're given. Um, so you can definitely tell that, I think. Yeah. Does yeah, that? I, I oh yeah, very much. And yeah, just, I, you know, the extension of that, we, we were speaking with one uh, librarian who was, uh, you know, pointing out that, uh, that on the, the city council, which was uh, determining uh, funding and resources, not a single city council member had a library card and they're making, they're making the decisions. We also found um, uh, you could walk up to the door of a library, whether it was open or closed, and there would, you would immediately feel welcome or not, mm -hmm. that uh, signage and it just, uh, almost every time you, you could walk up to it and, and you could get a sense of who the librarian was. And uh, just, just from that little bit, yeah. peeking through the window. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think it's fascinating how they've repurposed some buildings um, throughout the state. You know, oftentimes yeah. the library, either either the original library building had damage or whatever, but the, the repurpose of a space um, is is says something about the community, too. When we first started, uh, we actually were trying to define small libraries by square footage. Uh, mm -hmm. And we, uh, Carolyn Ashcraft, the state librarian at the time, gave us a list of libraries by square footage, which I was just amazed that she had. Uh, but then we decided that was a really lousy uh, way of trying to uh, measure it. And part of it is because of just what you're saying, that sometimes there would be 
you know, the only building that was available for the library might have been a, a huge, uh, you know, old retail space. But but the resources and the the people served defined it as small, and so we modified our our definition. Mm -hmm. And I'm really impressed that you only had, did you say you only had one person say no to having their photograph taken? Literally. And That's uh, shocking. Which was amazing. And not, uh, it is. <laughs> it is. And, you know, in order to use their photo, we have to have them sign a, mm -hmm. a model release. And as, as, you know, anyone who's ever done that, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a daunting thing. I mean, to say you can use my photo for anything you want for eternity, you know, <laughs> that kind of legalese. And, and yet, uh, you know, as one, one person who was reluctant to sign that uh, told me, he said, the only reason I'm signing this is because the librarian said it's okay and I know <laughs> she would never do anything to hurt us. So, yeah. <laughs> that, and that's very true. Um, yeah, because, you know, yeah, and I, yeah. I wonder if people are more comfortable now because we all have cameras on our phones and we're used to taking pictures maybe a little bit more than we were 15, 20 years ago, um, you know, if people are just more comfortable, but, but so when you sit people down, you know, if you've got the chair and you've got the backdrop and you sit them down and you're there taking the photograph, I mean, they're not, so you just kind of, you're talking to them. How do you yes, get them? Uh, we keep it really simple. And again, I think the, uh, they recognize very quickly that uh, we don't have any expectations. We're not, we're not trying to direct them in any way. And it's the leaving them alone, which is, I think, the, the biggest part of it. But we talk, uh, we might ask them a couple questions about why they come to the library or what they typically are looking for. But in, it's a very fast process. I mean, we only take two or three images and then move on. And it's an, I think it's an indication of, of how relaxed they are that in two or three images, we can get one that, that we think anyway portrays uh, their personality and character. Yeah. And I think uh, the more, you know, they look at us too, they realize when they sit down with this uh, 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 a big softbox uh, light on one side, and then they look at this um, uh, rather uh, uh, this large old camera pointed at them. I think it adds a certain, uh, they realize that it's, it's not just casual, that it's an important event that's yeah. uh, taking place mm -hmm. for them and they treat it accordingly. Well, and maybe it's because it's at the library. And so like, just like they trust their librarian, they're gonna trust yeah. the space. And um, <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you. Right. Both so much for doing this. This has been great. It's a great start to our 2022 series um, of Legacies and Lunch. So we really, we really appreciate it. Now let me switch. Well, can I find who's next month? Did I close that window? That would be totally something I would do today. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> so next month we're gonna have Warren Eugene Miltier junior for um his talk on free people of color in the south he has a new book out so mark your calendar for wednesday february 2nd at noon will be virtual again so thank you so much don and sabine for doing this i really appreciate it um and we'll get it up on youtube in the next couple of hours okay happy new year everyone happy new year thank you for having us and, you're welcome um, go visit your local libraries <laughs> yes yes and have a library card all those board members yes. have a library. i mean uh town hall people need to have a library card yeah yeah, yeah they're free it's amazing <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> thanks y'all right. thank you thank you bye, bye, -bye. take care <laughs>